Hey everybody, I'm super pumped up today. Uh, I am at Oridi's Shoe Repair with the owner, Neil, and he's gonna help uh, basically teach me and let me resole, if you remember these double monk strap shoes, um, in his shop, right? So how cool is this, all right? Here's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of my five. shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. If you can see, this is obviously not my house, not my garage. And if you recognize these shoes um, that I already put heels on, um, I'm not afraid to show you guys mistakes. I tried to repair the tips of the toes, mistake. The soles are really thin, they need to be resold, okay? Time out, I owe you guys an explanation. If you go back to the video where I put the heels on these shoes, you'll see that in that video I said, this is gonna be exciting, I'm gonna resole them. I shot the video that you're about to watch two and a half years ago, and I never released it. Bob, you're an amateur at home, self-proclaimed cobbler, and you got to go to a professional shop. Why wouldn't I upload and show that video? This is really exciting. Now, there's only a couple reasons that I wouldn't upload and show a video. Number one, if it just didn't work out, it just the result just you know it wasn't even worth showing. Uh, there's no educational or entertainment value would be another reason. A third reason is because I might feel that I couldn't show the video in a positive light for everyone involved. And that's kind of a case in this scenario. So let me give you a warning right up front. The stitching quality went really bad on this. I mean, really bad. It went bad for two reasons. Number one, I just couldn't stitch. These shoes were thrifted for one dollar. They're the perfect shoes to learn on, okay? But I literally stitch off of the edge of the shoe, the sole, and I punched like six holes in the upper. So just be warned, it's bad. Second reason, his machine, actually both of his machines, but especially the Blake McKay uh, outsole stitcher was having some adjustment problems. So either like the thread tensioner was wrong or maybe the thread lubrication was wrong and the thread was bunching up and the thread was balling up and it just wasn't coming out right. And I just didn't have the cojones to upload a video, video uh, because I know how brutal and uh, exacting people on the internet can be. But um, I've grown a little bit as a person and I'm going to go ahead and show it anyway. So I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope you guys get some value out of it. Remember, this is not really a how-to. This is you getting to go along a journey of exploration with me. I hope that makes sense. Let's go. So I guess the uh, the first part here actually is you said removing the insole, which you've already done, right? Yeah. And I guess this thing, this just... Just rip it out. Rip it out? Okay. Yeah. I mean, you want to be a little light with it. You don't want to rip it totally. You may right. need it. You may want to reuse it or use it as a uh, template. Okay. Got it. Oh, that makes sense as a template. And this is not on every style of shoe. Like I know Alan Edmonds, the insole is the, a thick, it is thick integral and, structural. So right, this is um, not a how-to for every shoe. This is, right, right. Oh, is that what this is for? That's a little piece of oh. uh, sandpaper grit. You know, heavy grit, and you, you, you just kind of scratch up. See, that's another one of the things I figured out. Um, I don't know if I'll get to show this. Yeah, I'll get to show skiving. The, the and it what literally took me two hours takes him about 10 seconds because of some of the tools it's unbelievable when you have the right tools the job gets you know yeah so now you want to inspect it and look for the weak spots in in this shoe to where you can start to uh cutting off the uh sole i've already uh -huh. kind of found a weak spot and have started a bit so you just stuff it in there, kind of get it in there, and then you just pry away. And again, these shoes are Blake stitched. Or is Blake and McKay stitched the same thing? I hear both terms almost uh, interchangeable. Uh, uh, all I know is a McKay is you know inside and it's a you know locking stitch. So, uh huh. You know it's a lock stitch. Blake, don't know. I think Blake McKay are the same thing. These shoes were a little bit confusing because they have a welt on them. And um, yeah, I think the welt is fake. We're going to find out for sure here. I mean, I, I don't want to say the welt is fake, but I think it almost looks good you're welted, but I don't believe it is. So we want to watch. When you do that, you want to watch. You don't want to be ripping this, uh, mm -hmm. the welt mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. where my line is going to be, where I'm going to finish this. These oh, are, they're not... I was hoping, unless it's a problem, to keep that logo. You want that logo, okay. And, that, and that's what you want to shoot for. 
This, of course, we can go to the shelf and get a new one, and but mm -hmm. the opposite side is the same thing. So you just flip. It. Got so it. you line it up. Give yourself a little bit of fudge room on the end. Uh huh. And now, in this manner, we're not redoing a heel. So right. our machine isn't going to be able to get right up close. Right, I hear you. So yeah. I have to compensate on uh, distance for the heel, for okay. my uh, sander to get up in there. Yep. Logistical issues of the tools. You, you know, know, but if I had the whole heel off, as in, as in this job, I don't have that issue. I can right. bring it back a lot further because the grinder can get the, right i can up, get the grinder and yeah the, right up close so now again you want to look at the gentleman's or the lady's shoe pattern mm -hmm. here's the ball here's here's his main you know mm -hmm. i want to come right about in here on the cut mm -hmm. and that's a knife i know it looked like a file when you first pull it up but that's actually just a really long knife right right it's a knife it's nothing fancy straight edge not serrated uh, anything. Yeah, let's see this. If I look at the thickness of it, I'm trying to feel. Yeah, it's it had some life left in it, but it's it's getting pretty thin. You can see my fingernails. Not it's not paper thin, but mm -hmm. it's not very not very thick to begin with. Right. So yeah, he still had some life left in these shoes. Yeah. If but for demonstration purposes. Yeah. Well, especially because they're new to me, you know. So. <clears throat> right, and, and you know. So you just kind of cleaning up now, looking, seeing where we're at. Mm -hmm. And this is what we had mentioned earlier. The front tip has been sewn through. That was me. Was that the one I repaired? No. No. Oh, no, no. Your, okay. your, yeah. um, but here's your line of the fake stitching. You can bring it down a little bit lower right to there. Okay. There's your line of fake stitching. Okay. On the well. Right. People and it doesn't do anything because you can see that's the well. Wow. Right. That's nuts. So that's the bottom of the stitch, and where's the sole? So that line of out stitching there is completely cosmetic. Mm -hmm. that's and if nice. you notice, this is in much further than mm -hmm. uh, that little stitch. So that's just uh, ornamental, decorative. Wow. So if you see, this is going to be an inside stitch, a uh -huh. McKay stitch on the inside of the shoe. Yeah. From yeah. in here and around. And so at this point. I want to try and fish out oh, that wow. string. So hopefully this string can just pop right out. Not like it is. <laughs> do, 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 do. So yeah. in other words, that string stayed connected. Yeah. And you don't have to pick every loop out. Huh. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I have to do some more fishing in that shoe to try and get more string I think out. I they get the idea. That's awesome. So yeah, you want that string out of your way as much as you can because um you know your stitcher when you're stitching you don't want the hook of your needle to you don't uh, want to have to fight it I can so here's where we're at with this one try and get you just to make sure you can see what we're talking about and so this is the insole okay as you can see that's the back side that is the back side of this insole okay it's one piece of leather and you can see where it's actually separated a little bit here that's the inner lining of the shoe you can see the upper um, and it's got it actually goes to right about there this welting um, And as we pointed out before that welting is not structural that that I'm sorry that stitching on the welt is not structural It's just basically decorative um, and Yeah, so Next step from here is going to be basically to grind a, a, a beveled edge on this like this shoe has here You can see here right beveled edge there
Okay, there we go. Now, obviously, like here, it's overlapped a little bit. That's going to get ground off, so don't worry. We're not going to worry about that. So this toe section, where I botched it up myself by, um, um, you know, by trying to repair the tip. So what I did was basically I destroyed the threads that were there. Uh, uh, Tony Oriti was the old owner. And it's a Reedy shoe repair. But anyway, so he's uh, basically putting thread back in that well. This is purely decorative, is what he's doing here. And he's going over it a couple times um, to fill those holes back up with uh, threading to you know duplicate what I messed up. So that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Keep it running. I mean, normally we could put it in here mm -hmm. and oh. run it. Ah, uh, okay. This is actually the outsole stitcher, mm -hmm. right? A curved For stitcher. Good. Yep. Okay, for Goodyear welted shoes. And the Blake stitch machine, is, McKay stitch machine is right back there with a hood open. Pretty cool stuff. So we're getting closer and closer. So now we want to, you know, kind of, we want to uh, grind this down, leave a groove, and just kind of, you know, sand it down to where we can uh, apply the uh, new leather uh, salt. This stitching, I don't want to press too hard and, and beat it up, but it, it's okay. Again, it's ornamental, but we don't want to have it come through either. find that groove a little better. You can also define the groove on this. This is a breast turn, which you would also clean a heel like that. Oh wow. I'm kind of okay with all this. It feels good. You just want to inspect it. See there's a little gap there? You're not know, that up. Not worried about the little bit of hairs because the glue will glue that back down. And our cork is, uh, you know, fanned in where it's not going to get in the way of the new leather. And repeat. Mm -hmm. Oh, you you want to do this one? Sure. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, you can do it there or on the breast here if I show you. Okay. Uh, flip it over. Yep, bend it all the way a lot. Bend it, yeah. Now you want to uh, just kind of get it right on there. I don't know, I think, it, I think you did it on this one. I right? did? Yeah. Heel in, you get more area, flip it over. Yeah, okay. Yeah, heel in. You only want to use that edge. Oh, okay. You want to kind of cut. That's not easy. That's good. Yeah. There we are. This one? Correct. This way. Face up. Face yep. up? Okay. Yep. This machine is so cool. Uh, what it's going to do is going to put, if you could see, a beveled edge on it. And um, to do this by hand, to do that by hand, it, it'd probably take 30 minutes to an hour per piece of leather. It's unbelievable how fast this is. So 
um, they shove it up against here, right? And just crank? Correct. You okay. want to keep that flat to the uh, base? Yep. Here. Perfect. Go. Ah, look at that. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. That literally would take 30 minutes to an hour by hand, and you'd never get it that nice. It's right. Like amazing. So now this is what's left over is this skive here. Yeah. And when a, a shoe, um, here, take the camera. When a shoe is has a a worn down heel. Ah, like a heel we, base? The, the heel, once this is all ripped off and the, it's into the block, we can uh -huh. put that in there to fill that wedge nice and then we make the heel flat right 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 before you put a new top lift that's right. if they've worn through the top lift into the heel base that's awesome uh, the, so using the heel even to little, the block yes even little scraps right. uh-huh but it, 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 you tell me it, just, you just want that flat you know a nice uh bevel to it a nice sky to it okay and then just rough the bottom with any one of them just to wake up the leather a bit. Uh, we're going to glue the heck out of it. Back in action. We have the, the bottom leather torn down, comfortable with the sanding and uh, the new cork added um, in there nice and smooth. Gaps are filled, the corners are tight, and uh, now we're down to gluing. We've skived down the leather. I have a nice, we still left a little nub here, so when it gets on there, we'll have a little bit to grind it and it'll finish together. So we're pretty much gluing at this point. I mean, this isn't a, 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 a fine paint job, so you, you can kind of just pinch and pull. You want to get it under the cracks. We, uh, again, we did the inside, so that's given the shoe a lot of structural support once we did, you know, when we glued the underneath. Mm -hmm. You know, people tape it off and all that. I, I choose just to get sloppy. <laughs> and not too much glue, because the glue, when we start to stitch, will get in the way. Mm. the middle okay of that one uh it is um it, i think i ran over it once just didn't dry real good but again this is one coat of two ah, and okay. that's right in the middle if it was an edge yet yeah, i would be concerned okay. i don't like how these edges kind of contour in mm. but it, i think it's going to be fine okay as long as we don't have a gap there and if we do uh once we do once on the finish, we can uh, fix that when we uh, uh, burnish the edge. Gotcha. Well, I know what you're saying now because two coats. Because when you, uh, I've noticed when you open up the leather, the grind cool. it, the pores open up, and like the glue kind of soaks in. Well, yeah, and it seems like you kind of almost need a primer coat of glue and a top coat of glue. Well, the, the glue, uh, this is a layer. Um, once the two coats of glue or the one coat of glue, the two parts, once they dry, they form, mm -hmm. you know, a, a rubber layer, essentially. Yeah. So the beauty of that is, it, you know, now it'll be waterproof, essentially. And, you know, the leather itself is, you know, water proof, water resistant. Uh, but, uh, you know, the glue is, you know, the, the main, main structure that holds it on and together. Um, the stitching is all well and good. A lot of shoe repairs don't stitch anymore. Yep, that's and that's actually, um, I drove past two other shoe repair places in my city um, to get here because the two other ones that were much closer to me, knowledgeable people, great, you know, great people, uh, the one I met face to face, the one I have met once before, but neither of them do stitch. And I'm like, you know what, I just... And they're gentlemen in shoe repairs of 35 repair years shoe repairing plus and and, and again the sh the stitching is, is you know ornamental it does help don't get me wrong you can't yeah. knock it i just preferred to have it overall uh we'll oh, let this dry for 10 to 15 minutes uh, the drying depends on many factors such as 
the uh, you know the the humidity, the heat, the cool, the the uh, air circulation. So, and and you'll know when it's dry. This one almost is already dry. This one's very close. It it, it gets tacky, you know. Yep. Yeah. Gets you know tacky. And you just want to be patient at this at this point. Okay. Because uh, all the way you see, I know you can't really see it on the picture, but back there, those are the shoe stretchers he's got. Now, you, uh, do you explain what this is and what you did here? Well, that's a, a, a lift. The gentleman's uh, leg is one shorter than the other. Uh -huh. So uh, you put the lift in there. You take, Amazing. So this whole part was added in there? Added in there. You know, the, the bottom, this is the original sole on the bottom, and it was cut off. And um, I added this. This is, you know, this all means something. Uh -huh. That uh, sixth, you know, that iron in there. But uh, I brought it up front, and I think it came out very nice. That's awesome. All right, so we're at the point of putting the uh, soling on. And what I do is warm it up. Oh, really? What'd that do? It helps... Uh, wake up the glue a bit to kick out some of the uh, thinners the you know and it softens the glue makes it a little more pliable for it for adhesion you wow. know it, it's just an extra little step you know some guys have uh, some shoe repairs have uh, you know heat lamps yeah uh, you know things like that but I find the the uh, you want to get this approximated even overlapped a bit Mm -hmm. Push okay. it in and then you want to grab your tip and then you know roll it down and use your fingers and pinch Just and you want to keep your fingers away the grease and dirt on your fingers away from your surfaces Gotcha from the surface So here we have this we just want to you know push push and, and form it onto the last the last the last is you know your hard surface under the, that metal foot and uh, you know, I just want to be comfortable. See, and then you feel here. Yeah, I have a little ridge here, but mm -hmm. that's going to grind off. And you want a little bit up. You don't want a gap at all. Right. So we don't want, want a gap. Yeah. Right. And I think we're good there. So you can use the uh, ah. end of the French hammer and uh, you know drag it and push. You don't want to do this too much because then you'll see it once uh, on the finish. Mm -hmm. I'm going to set this one aside. That's one of the other things I learned when I did the resole at home fail when I resold a shoe at home is, you know, by the time I was done with it, the sole of the shoe looked like it was, you know, shot with a shotgun. I'm not, you know, it was like the hip beat with a up and hammer. Oh right. yeah, you know, hammer, Pain. nail marks, all that everything right. all over. That's and you learn. I mean, yeah. stuff is a lot harder than it looks. Believe me, looks so easy when these pros do it and. Yeah. No, it's so much more difficult than it looks like. And we'll put that into a press just for a few, for a little bit, just to keep it tight. So this is the five in one. You want to just kind of grab it and pull down. And then it'll roll around and push down on that seam. It's, it's, there's a spring in the back that holds it down. How cool is that? And then you, you do a good inspection of that, you know, black to brown. Make sure there's no, no air gaps. Gaps. Like right here, I think there's a little bit of a gap. Okay. So you just kind of give it a little punch down. So you're guiding it with one hand while you're cranking with the other. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, and it... You know, you get comfortable with all the tools. And I see you're pulling the upper back out of the way there. Yeah, and that's just so, one, I don't cut it. And two, you know, it's out of the way. Wow, look at that. So now we're, we're this close. We have a little bump on this edge, and it's not nice over here. But this is going to get ground down. Yeah, we'll take it to the uh, finisher over here and, and uh, knock that down nice and flat. Nice. So you, you, you're it's squared off. It's getting there. So... I think we're we're well well on our way with this for these shoes for the grinding and then looking at the insole and at that point polishing and 
mm -hmm. and being done. So oh, here yeah. comes some noise, and I'm just going. What I want to do is trim this edge and and, and uh, bring this uh, nice and flat and smooth. Nice. This one's for a lady's heel. This is for the men's heel. So. See how it kind of uh, undulates here and there. Not too worried about that because I can take it onto the grinder finisher. But what I want to do, what I'm looking at, is I want to see at least some. See right here. That, that needs a little more to it. And this is kind of thick here, and I'd have to push that out. But at this point, I'm comfortable with that. So I take it over here and in long motion. Even long motion. So now I'm kind of comfortable. All that undulation's kind of gone, but over now I want to get under here and flatten it out. Too much, you'll get you'll get the ridge going, but you want to see this edge and then the shoe edge, right. you know, ground a bit, not a lot, just a little bit, and I think that's good enough. Okay, we're we're, we're done. With that, now we're not done filming. Okay. But I always you know this edge is kind of so I just tape it a little bit. Just to get the edge yeah. off and keep that uh, a rounded edge. Right. Look at that. So, right now it's a rough shoe ready for. Uh, channeling and uh, stitching. Awesome. By the way, you never really know when you see people on video what they're going through in their lives or you know what the mitigating circumstances are. We just both had narrow windows to be able to film this and uh, he actually just purchased the business not too long before filming. Uh, the adjustment on uh, the Blake McKay machine he knew was off and the old owner was away on vacation or something like that was supposed to come back and help him get it set up. So like I said, we kind of, you know, caught this at an awkward time. So just please keep that in mind. Okay, so this, see, this is the, the Goodyear Welt stitching, outsole stitcher. Yeah, the curved stitcher. And, uh... You said in here... And here's bobbin. a bobbin, and then it has a little knife, cutting knife here for a groove. Oh, wow. Um, oh, so you don't have to cut the groove before you. It correct. Does it as it, you it'll just go, yeah. Wow, cool. And it lines up with the awl that will punch up and match up with the needle there, and then pull it back down and catch the thread and go. Wow. Yeah, this, uh, watch real quick, you'll see how the action works once we, once we get it rolling. So, you go, and then the all advances up. Uh-huh. That's that thing that just came up from the bottom. Yep, that guy. Uh-huh. And then it, it pushes the shoe in its hole, and then it rolls down, the needle follows. And the needle's got a hook on it, on the top. And then the, it goes grabs this yeah and brings it around throws it over that's crazy it goes all the way over the over the, the bobbin, bobbin spool and oh, crosses wow. over look so at there's that your cross stitch i just watched it work and i still really don't get it but i get it wow that's like a marvel of engineering they figured this out probably what the early 1900s late 1800s it, it long yeah i mean but it's still an excellent machine even the new machines are still wow really nice that was crazy.
So the trick here is just to be comfortable with its speed mm -hmm. and letting it ride and let the machine do its, its thing. I'm going to keep the shoe flat. Uh -huh. But I think overall we're, we're stitched, we're on the welt, and we're not crossing off the welt. So I'm happy with this. Okay, here we're going to be cutting the groove, right? Now remember, in case you skipped or forgot the warning in the beginning, this is where the outsole, outsole stitching goes south. Uh, the machine's not working right and my skills are horrible, okay? So uh, this is bad to get this needle. There's a little stop back there, right? And that's what that adjusted there, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's to adjust how far in from the edge of the sole you're stitching, right? Correct. Pretty cool. This is the Blake McKay stitch machine. Right, you can see part of it is inside the shoe, obviously. Uh oh, it broke, huh? Mm -hmm. I wanted to do this as I figured, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, because everything else I've been you, okay. Yeah. You're gonna go this the horn needs to go this way. Other way, okay. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna push it back. You know, make sure you're in the guide. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Get started. Now look at your, where you're going. You're okay. gonna go. You're gonna, keep you're, that you're in gonna the groove, try right? to keep that in the groove, but you're also gonna want to just relax and roll okay. it and try your best okay. to keep the shoe level. Okay. But it's gonna get hard because it's a large shoe, okay. and the horn only goes so far in. Dang, no, it's bunching the thread yep. up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, you, you know, at this point, you just gotta go. Okay. <clears throat> Hold your string. Huh? Hold your black string. No. Trigger it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is so much harder than it looks. Stay, stay right here, mm -hmm. and then you can catch it. Okay. All right. And like I say, go ahead and turn. You can. Yeah. Or just hit the pedal. You, 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 you go ahead. Uh, you're holding your black string. Nope. Okay. Go ahead and hit the. I always just try to get the first loop going. Wink is then. Okay. Now. Now hit the gas. Let her roll. Let her roll. You're good. 
Yeah, you're good. Are you sure? Yep, you're good. And remember, yeah. remember, I was saying uh, Clyde, you, sure. you were uh, you were trying to. You got to watch where we're going. Like here, yeah. I should have told you again. You got a sharp turn. Yeah. But see, yeah. we got the FE. We got the bad machine. You know, it's not running the way. So, and I knew these were coming down okay. So get this as much as you can. Right. You know, keep running. Just because we get a little curly here doesn't mean that we need. You know, we can still salvage a little bit. See, you're getting the mechanisms down. That's it, right? Yeah, you're good. Dang. And here they are all finished up. Now remember, this is actually two and a half years after I finished the shoes. I did put a high, high mirror shine on them. And you still actually can see some of the water damage, the salt water damage. You see that lumpy, bumpy line there? You can still kind of see that. It's not horrible. So the uppers isn't really the point of this video, but let me show you where I went off of uh, stitching. Oh, there's another... Some more water damage you can see there. Um, I'm gonna find the shoe. Here it is. Can you see that raw holes right there? That's where I leapt off of the sole and punched a bunch of holes in it. So you still can't see it, but it's not horrible, you know, especially from above. Um, the soles is really nothing to write home about. Remember, this is two and a half years after that video was released. Here's a quick shot of the interior of the shoes. You can see the Blake stitching on the interior. Uh, not pretty, but it's functional. And here they are with the insoles put back in. And I put a second insole in just because they're a hair too big and that helps take up some space. I've worn these out in the dirt and the mud. I tried to clean them up a little bit here, but you can still see some dirt. So the heels are holding up well. I honestly don't wear these shoes much. You can see I put some rubber protective half soles on for obvious reasons, okay? I don't even have any more video of the outsoles right after they're finished. I just was so disgusted with it, I didn't even record it. Um, but I don't like these shoes that much. Why? They are pretty long. If you remember my floor shines, the Royal Imperials, reselling at home. Remember these shoes, look how long these things are. In comparison, we'll try to line up the heels. Can you see? What I'm saying is the shoe, I am already an 11 and a half triple E. These shoes are 12 triple E. The toe cap is tremendously long and the shoe is about a half inch, three quarters of an inch longer than the other shoes. I just kind of feel like when I wear these things, it's accentuating a feature that I'm already not excited about, if that makes sense. Um, I just don't really, like I said, they just don't make me feel great when I wear them. So what I've turned these shoes into is if I'm going somewhere, I'm going to take my shoes off. Let's say I go to a trampoline park or something like that. I might take my shoes off and, you know, these would be shoes I'm not going to be upset if somebody steals them. Um, you know, things like that. Any kind of outdoor endeavor where, you know, I need something that's a little bit dressy, but, um, you know, they could get dirty or muddied up. I'll wear these. So... Please be easy on me in the comments. I hope you guys still got some value out of that. Uh, God bless you guys, and I will see you guys later. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on Playlists. And from there, you can go to things such as before and after videos, where you'll find a whole list of videos similar to this one.